This is a review of pediatric fractures of the lower extremity. Look for avulsion fractures of the pelvis. Pediatric pelvic fracture is usually treated conservatively. If they are young, they can be treated with a spica. Watch injury to the triradiate cartilage. The cartilage could be closed prematurely and the hip may sublux. Fracture of the femoral neck. Two things. Number one, it needs to be fixed. Number two, the evascular necrosis rate is high. In hip fractures in children, the screws across the physis is acceptable. Fracture that is transepiphyseal, the rate of evascular necrosis is 100%, and if it is subcapital, the rate is 50%. If it is basi cervical, the rate is 25%, and if it is intertrochanteric, the rate is 10%. Displaced fracture means fixation. You need to do surgery. Now we go to a fracture femur. A femoral shaft fracture occurs before the walking age, then suspect child abuse. Fracture femur, the most important thing in an exam is the treatment. So from zero to six months, we put pavlic harness. From six months to five years will be a spica. From five years to less than 11, you can use flexible rod. When do you use flexible rod? When the patient is less than 110 pounds, when the patient is about 11 years or younger, and when the fracture is in the mid diaphysis, transverse or short oblique. What if the fracture is comminuted? Then you're going to use submuscular bridge plate. What if the patient is older? People say use a rod to counter entry and avoid injury to the deep branch of the medial femoral circumflex because that may lead to a vascular necrosis. I personally will use a plate, but some people use a rod. What is the story of AVN and children? If you see a bilateral AVN, child is young, it's probably Gaucher disease, it affects the resting zone, if you have one size involvement of the epiphysis, it's probably birthus. If there is bilateral involvement of the epiphysis, it's probably multiple epiphyseal dysplasia. Leukemia affects children and causes AVN. Slip epiphysis, if it's unstable, 50% chance of an AVN. In addition to a fracture hip in children will cause AVN. And if you put a rod in a young child and you injure the medial femoral circumflex artery, you can cause AVN. So this is an important topic. I have never seen an exam that doesn't have at least one question on AVN. Leg length discrepancy. Usually, the injured leg is longer if the fracture occurs between the age of 2 to 10. Sometimes, there is shortening of the injured extremity if the fracture shortens significantly during the treatment. Distal femur physial fracture. The fracture generally propagates through multiple layers of the physis. There is a high risk of premature growth arrest 
that frequently causes deformity, angular deformity, and or leg length discrepancy. This gross disturbance can occur in up to 60% of the patients. If the growth arrest occurs in the middle of the physis, you can have leg length discrepancy. If it occurs at the periphery, it can have an angular deformity. And the question is, when do you excise and when do you correct the deformity? Now, this is the chart of growth. Boys grow till the age of 16, girls grow to the age of 14. The leg grow about 23 millimeter a year, mostly coming from the knee. The proximal femur give you a 3 millimeter a year. The distal femur about 9 millimeter. The proximal tibia about 6 millimeter. And the distal tibia give you 5 millimeter a year. When do you excise the physeal bridge? You excise it when there is a bar that less than 50% and there is at least two years of growth remaining. You do epiphysiodesis when there are two years of growth remaining and the deformity is more than two centimeters. You do lengthening when the deformity is substantial you know, four or five centimeter, when epivisudesis alone cannot take care of the problem. The most common injury pattern is Salter Harris II fracture. In treatment of distal femoral physeal fracture, the treatment usually close reduction and percutaneous pinning and casting. However, if the fracture is Salter three or four, reduce the articular surface and fix it with screws. The scenario that will come in the exam is uh, somebody uh, about 14 to 15 years old and he had a knee injury and he had laxity. That is probably a growth plate injury, not a ligamentous injury. We used to get stress views. We don't do that anymore. We get MRI. We go to another topic. Patellar sleeve fracture, it occurs between the cartilage sleeve and the main part of the patella. It usually needs surgery with a tension band or modified tension band technique. Differential diagnosis is bipartite patella, which occurs usually in the supralateral aspect of the patella. Leave it alone, you may need lateral release if symptomatic and other treatment didn't help. Proximal tibial fractures are four entities. Tibial spine, tibial tubercle, proximal tibial epiphyseal fracture, proximal metaphyseal tibial fracture. Tibial spine fracture. This is like ACL in adult. So there are three types. Non-displaced, you treat it in a cast and extension. Type two is partially displaced. You can treat it by either surgery or by a cast. Look at that complication because that's what comes in your test. Conservative treatment will give you lacks ACL, but not clinically significant. Surgery will give you stiffness. The one that's badly displaced, that's type 3, you treat it by surgery. Watch, the medial meniscus can be trapped in this injury. Tibial tubercle, if it is displaced, will do RIF. Watch out. Injury to the anterior tibial recurrent artery that will give the patient compartment syndrome. You find about compartment syndrome by increased analgesia requirement for the child. Proximal tibia has two ossification centers. The primary, which is the proximal tibia physis, and the secondary, 
which is the tibial tubercle physis. It closes from posterior to anterior and from proximal to distal. Classification of tibial tubercle fractures. Type 1, fracture of the secondary ossification center. Type 2, fracture at the junction of the primary ossification center. Type 3, fracture extend to the primary ossification center. The treatment is open reduction and internal fixation. Another injury is proximal tibia growth plate injury and displacement. Proximal tibia epiphyseal fracture. It is usually a high energy trauma. Since the physis is at the same level of the trifurcation of vessels, there is a risk of vascular injury with fracture displacement. The treatment usually anatomic reduction and fixation. In the last entity for the proximal tibia is the metaphysis. It will lead to valgus. Treatment is long leg cast in extension with various mold with or without reduction and observed for one to two years. This fracture may lead to a valgus deformity. Observe this valgus deformity. How about toddler fractures? It is a tibial shaft fracture called toddler fracture. The x-ray could look normal. The child will be unable to walk. Get internal oblique view and cast the child. This is one out of several problems that internal oblique view will help in identifying the problem. The last entity will be an ankle fracture. Fusion of the ankle growth plate is unique. It starts in the middle, goes to the medial, then goes to the lateral. So the lateral part of the growth plate is open. And when there's an avulsion of the anterior inferior tibiofibular ligament, you get what you call the low fracture. If there's displacement of more than 2 mm, you will do surgery. If you can tell, if you are not sure, you probably need to get CT scan before you decide to do surgery. How about the triplane fracture? You will see Salter 3 in the AP view and Salter 2 in the lateral view. Sometimes the fracture is irreducible because there is interposed preosteum. Growth arrest usually happen with fractures around the medial malleolus, which is Salter 4. Now the fifth metatarsal bone, watch out that the growth plate is parallel to the fifth metatarsal bone. It's not a fracture. If it is parallel, it's not a fracture. How about see more fracture in the foot? It is a growth plate injury that's open in the toes. When they ask you a general question, the growth plate fracture where it occurs, probably it is the zone of hypertrophy. This video is for educational purposes only. Please consult your doctor before you make any decision about your medical care.